This tutorial explains how to generate multivariate random data in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. So as a first step, when we want to create random data in R, it makes a lot of sense to set a random seed for reproducibility. And we can do that, as you can see in line two of the code. And after running this line of code, our examples are reproducible. And then in the first example of this tutorial, I want to show you how to generate multivariate random data manually. And we can do that, as you can see in lines four to seven of the code. So in lines four to six, I'm generating different randomly distributed vector objects. So in line four of the code, I'm creating a normally distributed vector. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the top right of our studio that a new vector object is appearing, which is called x1. And then in the next step in line five of the code, I'm using the rpoise function to create a Poisson distribution. And I'm adding to this 0.5 times the values in our vector x1 that we have created in line four. And by doing this, we can make sure that those two variables are correlated. So if you run line five of the code, another vector object is appearing at the top right. And similar to that, we can also create a third vector object based on a uniform distribution and based on the variables x1 and x2. So if you run line six of the code, another vector is appearing at the top right. And now in the next step, we can use the data frame function to combine our three vector objects in a data frame that is called data one. So if you run line seven of the code, a new data frame object is appearing at the top right, which is called data one. We can print the first six rows of this data set to the bottom in the RStudio console by using the head function, as you can see in line eight of the code. So after running this line of code, you can see at the bottom that our data set contains three columns, x1, x2, and x3. And all of these columns contain random numeric values. Now we can also use the core function, as you can see in line 10 of the code, to print the correlations between our variables. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the bottom that a correlation matrix of our data is returned. And as you can see, all our three variables are correlated. So for instance, the correlation between the variable x1 and the variable x2 is 0 0.325. So in this first example, I have explained how to create random multivariate data manually. However, it's also possible to use the mass package for this task, as you can see in the next example, starting in line 12 of the code. So for this, we first need to install and load the mass package, as you can see in lines 12 and 13. I have installed this package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 13 of the code. And after running this line of code, we are able to use the functions of the mass package such as the MVR norm function, as you can see in line 15 of the code. And within this function, we need to specify the number of cases that we want to sample. Then we need to specify the means of our variables. And we also need to specify the covariance matrix of our variables. And then we also need to specify the number of rows of our covariance matrix. So if you run lines 15 to 20 of the code, you can see that another data set is appearing at the top right, which is called data two. And we can print the first six rows of this data set to the bottom by running line 21. And then you can see that we have created a matrix object, which contains three columns. And all of these columns contain numeric values. In the next step, we can also apply the core function to create a correlation matrix as we already did in the first example. So if you run line 23 of the code, you can see that we have created a multivariate random data set with correlations between all of our variables. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage, statisticsglobe.com, because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video, so you can find it there. If you have liked this video, or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. 
Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.